B in example two here. Here's our parabola, y equals negative x squared plus 10x minus 18. Now the coefficient of the negative x squared is negative one. So we would factor a negative one out of the first two terms, the terms that have x's in them, like we factored the two out in the last page. Now when you factor a negative one out of a negative x squared, the, you would have a positive x squared. You're really dividing by negative one, that's why the sign changes. And when you factor a negative one out of the 10x, then we would get minus 10x here. Remember the sign will change when you factor the negative out. Now to know what to add here so that this becomes a perfect square trinomial, remember you take half of the negative 10 and you square it. So we take that negative 10 divided by two and square it. So negative 10 divided by two is negative five that we're going to square, which of course is 25. So in here we'll add 25 and subtract 25. Remember we only really want to leave this 25 in. We want this negative 25 to come out. Now remember when we bring the negative 25 out, it gets multiplied by the negative 1 in the front here. So that'll end up being a plus 25 outside of the brackets. So we have our x squared minus 10x plus 25 left in the parentheses in this plus 25 out here. Now, factoring the x squared minus 10x plus 25 will factor into x minus 5 squared. Remember again, the negative 5 is half of that coefficient. It's also what you squared here. And of course, it's the square root of the 25. The problem with the square root of the 25, it doesn't get you the sign right. You have to use the same sign as this one right here. So, the vertex of this parabola would be at 5, 7. Remember, opposite of the x-coordinate, same as the y, so 5, 7. And it opens down because the coefficient in front here, the negative 1, is less than 0, and so it opens down. So we plot our vertex at 5, 7, and of course 5, 7 would be right up here. And so I'll find a point on either side to graph our parabola. Now we do, we do know it opens down, but we need to find that point to know specifically how fast it's, it's uh, decreasing. So I'm going to take my vertex form here and notice the x coordinate is 5 there. So I'm going to put a 3 in place of x, 3 or 4 or perhaps 2 or maybe 6 or 7, something close to a, an x coordinate of 5. So I'm going to put 3 in. Now 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is 4. So now this negative, comes, this negative comes from here. So we have negative 4 plus 7, which of course is 3. So I put 3 in place of x, and I got a y value of 3. So that tells me the point 3, 3 is on the parabola. So plotting 3, 3, that would be the point right here. Now remember, remember, this is the vertex and the parabola is symmetrical. So if three threes on the graph, then this point over here would be as well, which of course is seven three. And then we can draw our parabola through them. Looks something like that. Last example on page four. We're told the cost, and C represents cost in dollars to run a piece of equipment, H hours per day, is given by this formula c equals 4h squared minus 96h plus 3100. And we're asked what's the minimum cost per day to operate the equipment and how many hours per day should be operated. Now the reason this is a quadratic relation is because lots of heavy equipment has a startup cost involved to it. So like if you're only running it for a short period of time, perhaps an hour a day, then there would be a really big cost associated with it when it's warmed up and running, then there were a period of a number of hours where uh, the extra cost actually isn't too significant. But then when the number of hours gets too big, perhaps there's it, you're starting to wear the equipment out, or perhaps it's running too hot, and of course the cost would increase again. So that's why this is a quadratic relation, and there is a, uh, a best scenario here where there's a certain number of hours per day where the total cost would then be minimized, have some minimum value. So um, we're going to take our original equation and do the same procedure, the completing the square we did in the last couple of pages. Notice the coefficient of the uh, h squared term is 4. So I would want to factor a 4 out of the terms that have h's, the 4h squared minus 96h. So factoring a 4 out 
of 4h squared, we get h squared left in here, and negative 96h divided by 4 is negative 24h. Again, leaves some room here so that you can do the completing the square. To know what number goes there, we look at the negative 24, and we divide it by 2, and then we square that value. So that's actually negative 12 that we're squaring, and of course that's 144. So we would add 144 and subtract 144. Now the next thing to do, we don't want that negative 144 to be left in there, so we'll bring that out. And don't forget that it gets multiplied by this 4 here. So 4 times 144 is 576, so this would be minus 576. Positive times a negative is still negative, so it's minus 576. And now what we have to do is factor this h squared minus 24h plus 144. It should be a perfect square trinomial. And so it should factor into h minus 12 squared. Again, the negative 12 is half of the negative 24, or the 12 comes from the square root of 144. But that doesn't give us the right sign. Looking here and saying it's half of negative 24 is negative 12 gives you the correct sign, h minus 12. Again, also negative 12, Negative 12 is the number we squared to get the 144 here. And of course, negative 576 plus 3100 is 2524. So this is now in the vertex form. We can see that the vertex would be 12, 25, 24. Uh, this is the number of hours per day. And this is the y coordinate of that vertex. So if we plot the point, 12, 25, 24 would be about right there. Notice uh, each block here is two hours on the h axis. Now, we want to graph this um, parabola. So, now to get other points, what you could do is look back at the original equation, say if h was zero, we'll put zero in here and zero in here, and then the cost would be 3100. So that's what I did. At zero, the cost is 3100 and it opens upward, we know this is the vertex, and so that's what the graph looks like. Now, the 12 is the time in hours, the 25, 24, this second coordinate, is the cost per day. So then we would answer that the minimum cost per day, there's the lowest cost, is this $2,524. And it would occur when the piece of equipment is run for 12 hours per day. And that's the end of the lesson.